presence. Greetings, church family and all the friends who have joined us today on our Good Friday service, who have joined us online. We want to welcome all of you. Thank you for joining us on this uh, Good Friday online service. Now, uh, it's a special day where we take time to remember and to remind ourselves of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross through his death uh, and his suffering, his burial, and his resurrection uh, uh, fr from, from the dead uh, as we go through these three days. Now, of course, that does not mean uh, we don't think about the cross the rest of the year. Uh, every day we live in the light of what Christ has done for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. That's something uh, we live by. Uh, but it's always good to have uh, special days dedicated uh, for us to focus uh, and just to talk about, to remind ourselves, to thank God for uh, what he did for us on the cross. We want to welcome those of you who have joined us, especially for the first time uh, through the online uh, uh, service. Uh, welcome to you. I just want to let, inform you that you're welcome to interact with us on the live chat. Uh, you're uh, welcome to share your name or your prayer request so that people can pray for you. Uh, also, just to point you to our church website, apcwo.org, where a lot of free resources, sermons, uh, books, all of that are, are available. Make use of that. And also through our YouTube channel, which probably you're using right now, um, there are the resources available here as well. And if you're interested, you're most welcome to subscribe uh, to this YouTube channel. Now, Today on the Good Friday service, uh, we are going to partake of the Lord's table towards the end of the service. Uh, we encourage you to uh, have some bread and grape juice, or if you don't have grape juice, given the conditions, uh, it'll be difficult to get grape juice. So if you have some water, that's fine. So you have bread and water, just set it at your table. Uh, be prepared uh, so that we can partake of the Lord's table together. We will uh, give some instructions from the end of the service. We will pray together and we will partake together and expect the Lord uh, to work in our hearts and lives as we do that. Now, you know, during this time, this these three services, Sunday, the 5th of April, 10th, uh, uh, Friday, the 10th of April, and uh, Sunday, the 12th of April, which is Resurrection Sunday, these three services, we are talking about the blood covenants. And so we began on Sunday, the 5th of April, uh, just to lay some groundwork, some background on, uh, on the meaning and understanding of covenant in the Bible. So really biblical covenant really is a, a firm, solemn uh, promise that God makes to us. Uh, it's his commitment. Uh, it's an agreement that he enters in with us. He invites us to enter into and join ourselves with God in covenant. And so we uh, gave some background to that in our uh, uh, April 5th Sunday service. If you've missed that, you're welcome to go back and just review that. And what we are going to do today is build a little further on, on, our, on our understanding of the blood covenant as we talk specifically about the new covenant. But I really wanna impress, before we get into that, I really wanna impress on our hearts how important it is for us as believers to know and to be established in this truth of a blood covenant. You know, when we talk about covenant, uh, it's not a if, maybe, but, could be a kind of a relationship that we have. No, when you, and, when you and I know that we are in covenant relationship with God, we know it's an absolute thing. Uh, when God makes a promise, it's not an if, it's not a maybe, it's a covenant. That means it's done. It, it, it's completely committed to that. It's 100%. That's why when you and I read the Bible, we don't read it as, as just a good book. No, the Bible is God's covenant. It's called the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Uh, it's a covenant book. It's, a, it, it, it's an expression of God's covenant to us, a solemn promise, um, a, a firm commitment that he's made. So every promise in, uh, in the Bible that we read is a covenant promise. It's, it's something God will stand by and will keep. And he said, I will not break my covenant. I will not alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. And we saw uh, last Sunday uh, from the Old Testament how um, the people uh, who were in covenant with God, they, uh, they lived their life on the basis of their covenant. When David went out to meet Goliath, he did it on the basis of his covenant with God. He recognized that the Philistine 
was uncircumcised. He didn't have a covenant with God, but David did. And so he fully expected God to give him the victory. There was not an if, there was not a maybe, there's not a it might happen, let me give it a try kind of an approach. No, David said, today the Lord will deliver you into my hand. How could David be absolutely confident? Because he knew covenant. He understood covenant. And that's what you and I as New Testament believers must move into. You see, many of us, are, we really love the Lord. We're very sincere, but we don't have understanding. We don't have revelation of God's word. And God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, or my people are gone into captivity because they do not have knowledge, because people don't understand. They don't know the truth of God's covenant with us. You know, we live lives far below what God really wants us to live at. You know, if we begin to live on the basis of covenant, we will walk with confidence. We will walk with uh, you know, calm assurance in every situation. When we face life situations, you know, life will bring all kinds of things against us. And there will be storms, there will be tribulations, there will be challenges, all those things, of course, they're part of life. But as you face it as a covenant person, as a man or a woman who knows he's in a blood covenant with Almighty God, you know victory is yours. It cannot be otherwise. Uh, there is no other option. You're a covenant person with God, and that's what you expect. And, and so you face challenges of life with that sense of confidence because you're a covenant person, because you understand blood covenant. Now, similarly, when we face demonic forces, we are not afraid. No matter what the devil does against us, we know what our blood covenant privileges in God. We know that we are we're in a covenant relationship with God, a relationship that God himself will never abandon. And, and so we face the enemy knowing we have a covenant, a blood covenant with Almighty God. And similarly, when we go before God, we go before him knowing uh, we have a blood covenant. We enter into the holiest with boldness because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, it gives us confidence and access with confidence before God. So knowing and understanding blood covenant is so important for the life of the believer, for us to live victorious, to live uh, successful in our everyday life. And that's why we are teaching uh, on, on the blood covenant. Now, uh, today we're going to uh, take things a little further. We're going to talk specifically about the new covenant. Now, when the Lord Jesus came uh, into the earth, we must understand, uh, and it's, again, I'm just reminding us that uh, Jesus was not just another man. This was God incarnate, almighty God, left his deity, powers of deity, his omniscience, his omnipresence, his uh, omnipotence, and he confined himself uh, to a man. And he walked on the earth as a man. He was God, but he had confined himself to a man. And he was walking on the earth. This was God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Now, um, Jesus came, uh, of course, to do many things. And we can look at many aspects of why he came. But one of the reasons which we find in the book of Hebrews, which I will read for us, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 9, the scripture says, then he said, Behold, I have come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. Uh, now, this is talking about the first, meaning the old covenant given through Moses, though, which we offer, often call as the law of Moses, the Mosaic covenant. He took that out of the way in order to bring in a second, which is the new covenant that he came to establish. So uh, uh, towards the end of his earthly ministry, just uh, uh, on the eve of his crucifixion, just the day before, uh, uh, as Jesus sat down with his disciples, uh, he did something very, very important. He talked about how the new covenant was going to be instituted, ratified, brought into effect. And so I'm just reading this from the Gospel of Matthew. The other Gospels also record this. In Matthew 26, I read verses 26 to 28. Uh, it says here, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. He blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So Jesus was doing something very symbolic and yet he was uh, uh, portraying what was going to happen 
through his crucifixion, through the, his body being crucified on the cross and his blood being shed. He said, take, this is my body and I'm giving it. This is my blood. And through this, a new covenant is going to be set in place. And he's inviting his disciples to enter into that new covenant by participating uh, in that uh, in that in what he was instituting the Lord's table, which we refer to it as the Lord's table. But what I want us to understand is this: when God established a blood covenant with Abraham, he did it using animals. So you know, in Genesis 15, which we saw our last Sunday, God told Abraham to get some animals, cut them into two, and God walked through the pieces of those animals. He cut a covenant. Berith. He cut a covenant with Abraham, a blood covenant. When God wanted to establish a covenant with the people of Israel, uh, uh, he told uh, Moses, he gave instructions, you know, you kill some animals, take the blood. This is in Exodus, the 24th chapter. Moses read all the words of the covenant to the people, and then he sprinkled the blood and said, this is the blood of the covenant that God is establishing with you. So those covenants were established uh, to the blood of animals. But here, God is offering his own body. So can you imagine this? God became a man and he took on a human body and he said, this body is my covenant sacrifice. I'm offering this up in order to establish a blood covenant with you. And he says, this is my blood. It's not the blood of some animals, some bulls and goats or birds. This is his own blood, the blood of the Son of God. He's saying, this is my blood. I'm with this blood, I am instituting, I'm ratifying, I'm bringing into effect a new covenant and I'm going to have that with you. So I want us to understand this. The covenant that you and I are in, the new covenant is a covenant far above any other covenant. It, was a, it is a covenant that has been established with the very body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, the Son of God. There could be no higher covenant than this. And, and you and I are privileged today as, as, as New Testament believers to be able to enter in to this covenant, to be able to join ourselves with God in an everlasting covenant through the body of his own son and to the blood of his own son, which he made available for us. So the Lord Jesus, with his own body, with his own blood, he instituted this covenant. He ratified this covenant. Uh, he set it into effect and he sealed it with his own blood. And then he invites us to enter into that covenant. And not only that, but today he stands as the mediator of this covenant. We're going to talk more about this on Sunday, uh, about the risen Christ and how that relates to the blood covenant. But let me just mention this, and this is based on Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. It says, for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant. Jesus stands as a mediator of the new covenant, uh, which he made possible but through his death uh, for the forgiveness of sins, for the, uh, under the, um, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So Jesus stands as the mediator of this new covenant, and we receive forgiveness for our sins. We receive uh, eternal inheritance. Now just think about it, that God himself set this covenant in place for you and me. The one who made the covenant stands to enforce that covenant and to also represent that covenant on our behalf. This is so wonderful, so amazing. You know, and, and our relationship with God is wrapped in this blood covenant. When you say, I, <clears throat> when you say, I am a son of God, I'm a child of God, you know, you're not just saying, God is my father and I'm a son and daughter. Yes, that is true. There is that wonderful relationship you have. But that relationship is wrapped in a blood covenant, meaning God is saying it, that the relationship that you have with God has only been made possible because of this blood covenant. It is undergirded by this blood covenant. It is sealed by this blood covenant. I mean, God is so absolutely committed to you as a father to a son or daughter through this blood covenant. When you say, I'm an heir of God, I'm a joint heir with Jesus and 
God is king. Uh, you are talking about this wonderful relationship that you have as part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. You're a representative of this kingdom. But understand that even this kingdom relationship that you have with God is wrapped in blood covenant. It is so secure. It is so strong. God is 100% co committed to this covenant. The only person who can ever break this covenant is you. God will never walk away from it. He, he, this is his covenant made with the body and the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. So I want to understand some aspects of this relationship that we have with God that is wrapped in this blood covenant. You know, because we are in, in a blood covenant with God, here's some of the things that, uh, that, that, that we receive in our relationship with God. Remember, the purpose of the covenant is relationship. Uh, it is to have a, a relationship uh, that, that cannot be experienced otherwise. You know, uh, a, a, a marriage, for instance, a, a man and woman uh, enter into a marriage covenant uh, and, and therefore they come into a place of relationship that cannot be experienced otherwise. They are husband and wife and that's very, very unique to them. And so that's, that's probably uh, uh, in some form an expression of the kind of relationship we have with God, a covenant relationship. You know, in, in a covenant relationship, we bear each other's name. Jesus said, you go in my name. And he said, you confess me before men, I will confess your name before the Father. So we have the right to speak his name and speak on his behalf and he speaks our name before the Father. In this covenant relationship that we have with God, uh, there is a oneness, there is harmony uh, in our relationship. You know, we, there's closeness. He said, you abide in me, I'll abide in you. There's that unity that we have in our relationship with God. There's, a, there's, there's the mutual sharing of goals and purposes Paul said, it's no longer I, but Christ who lives in me and Christ is living in me and through me. What belongs to one belongs to the other. You know, we are made joint heirs with Christ. We, we share in all that is his and uh, the, there is mutual enrichment. The weakness of one is lost in, in the strength of the other. So really in, in, in this covenant that we have with God, Almighty God uh, is everything. We are nothing, but we come into this covenant with God and now all that he is is now made available to us. Like we said, in, our, in the first part of the series, uh, Jehovah, uh, dis, uh, he disclosed all of the Jehovah names. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am Jehovah uh, Nisi. And I'm all this. I want to be all this to you in, a co in and through a covenant relationship. So really, you know, when we've come into a covenant relationship with God, all that he has is now uh, made available to us. And our weakness is lost in his strength and in his greatness. That's why Paul says, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, he says, you know, my sufficiency is of God. God supplies for all of my need. So, you know, that's the way we have to live. That when we understand we are in covenant relationship with God, uh, we don't uh, we don't live limited by our weaknesses. We know that our weaknesses are overshadowed by his greatness, by his sufficiency. And we learn to draw out of all that he's made available to us through our covenant relationship with God. And that's how we are supposed to live. You know, now uh, I want to just talk a little bit about this new covenant that Jesus said. You know, there's, there's a lot that the New Testament teaches us about this new covenant. I want to just touch on some highlights here and then encourage us to live as people who are in a blood covenant with God in this new covenant, which is far superior than any other covenant uh, that is recorded for us in scripture. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the blood covenant that we have with God through his own son. Now, this new covenant, the Bible tells us, is a better covenant on better promises. Hebrews 8 and verse 6 says that he has... He is also a mediator, is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. So what the Bible is saying is this new covenant is far superior, it's far better than the old covenant. Now, sometimes we will say, you know, why do you read the Old Testament? Because at least you need to know what's your minimum. You know, if the blessings of God to his people under the old covenant was this, it covered their spiritual life, it covered their material life, it covered various aspects of their life. That was under the old covenant. The Bible is saying the new covenant is a better covenant on and has better promises. It has much more. It's, 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 it's more, it's richer. And so we are part of that covenant. So we read the 
Old Testament and say, you know, that's the minimum. I've got to live above that. I've got to get that and I've got to live more than that because we are part of the new covenant. The new covenant also uh, is a covenant uh, of, of grace. The work is completed. You see, under the old, under the old covenant, uh, people had to work for something. But the new covenant is a covenant of grace. Where God says, I have finished the work and I've, given, I've made it available for you. Now you just walk in it. You just receive it. The Bible tells us we are blessed with all spiritual blessings uh, in heavenly realms through Christ Jesus. So understand this is a covenant of grace not of works. The new covenant is a more glorious covenant. We read about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 through 11, uh, that it is a more glorious covenant. It is a, a covenant of the work of the Spirit. Uh, and because we are in this new covenant, in the new covenant, every child of God has the work of the Spirit through them. You see, under the old covenant, there are only prophets, priests, and kings who experience the work of the of the Spirit. In the New Covenant, every child of God experiences the work of the Spirit. And the Bible says that the work of the Spirit is a, is a more glorious ministry. That means we can expect greater manifestations than the Old Covenant uh, or, or manifestations of the glory of God. So whatever you see in the Old Covenant, the miracles, the, the mighty signs, we have access to much more. And that's what we should be pressing and saying, God, if Elijah did this, if Elijah Elisha did this, if Moses did this, Lord, in the new covenant, we want to see greater things because we have a much more glorious ministry under the new covenant. Now, in the new covenant, the, the sign and the seal of the new covenant, let me talk about the seal that you have a new covenant in, is the new heart, the new creation that you've become. Uh, in, 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 in Abrahamic covenant, uh, circumcision was given as a, as a seal of that covenant. Uh, in the new covenant, a, a changed heart. It is a circumcision of the heart. That The fact that your heart has been made new. And you read about this in, uh, in Galatians uh, chapter 6 and verse 15. I'll read it. It says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. That's what counts. You know, that you've been made a new creation. That's a seal of the new covenant. The sign of of the new covenant is the Lord's table. You know, whenever we celebrate the Lord's table, that's a sign. That's us expressing the fact that we are in covenant with God. You know, when a, when a man, woman are married, they have a sign. They have a token. You know, it's the ring they wear on the finger. It's it's a token. It reminds them, and it reminds every. It sure tells everybody else. I am married. Uh, I belong to somebody. In the same way, when we celebrate the Lord's table, that's our sign. Uh, Paul says we are making a proclamation of the Lord's death. What is the Lord's death? He said, in this body, in this blood, I am establishing a new covenant. So whenever you and I partake of the table of the Lord, we are proclaiming that we are in a blood covenant with Almighty God. That's why uh, this is so powerful, that when you eat the bread and you drink the cup, the juice, uh, you, you and I are saying we are in a covenant with God. God is, is on our side, he's for us, and everything he promised in that covenant is mine. Nobody can stop it because God, when he makes a covenant, he's 100% committed to it. That's God. He's a God of covenant. He's fully committed. You don't have to any, have any doubt. Is God for me? Is he going to come through for me? Is he going to back me up? He's gonna, is he going to help me? You don't have to have any iota of doubt because you are in a blood covenant with God. And every time you, you, you partake of the Lord's table, you're making a proclamation. It is a sign. It is a testimony. It's a reminder to God. God, I'm in covenant with you. It's a sign, a proclamation to everybody else. I'm in blood covenant with Almighty God. That's why this Lord's table is so important. And we are going to do this at the end of the service today. We're going to partake of the Lord's table. We're going to make a sign. We're going to proclaim our blood covenant with God and with each other. There's several other benefits of this, uh, our, our blessings of our new covenant. Uh, we have a new identity in Christ through this new covenant. Just as God gave Abraham a new identity, he changed his name. We have a new identity in Christ and we must understand all that we are in Christ uh, and it's made possible for us through this new covenant uh, that, that we have. You know, and one more thing I want to mention is this. Under the old covenant, God told his people 
uh, to engage in, in ongoing feasts and sacrifices. Uh, and that was a constant uh, expression of their covenant life uh, with God. And so also in the new covenant, our spiritual sacrifices of praise, of worship, of doing good to one another. Hebrews 13 says, uh, uh, 13, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 and 16 says, these are our spiritual sacrifices, and these are a way of proclaiming, of uh, invoking uh, the new covenant. It says, I'm in covenant with God, and I'm stepping into that. I'm living out of the benefits of that every time we offer spiritual sacrifices. So I want to encourage you and me. Uh, as God's people. You know, we are in a blood covenant with God. And the purpose of this covenant is this place of intimacy. But this covenant has effect on our everyday life, how we live life. Everything in our life is touched by this new blood covenant that we have with God. And I want to uh, uh, encourage us to have a new covenant mentality. Uh, you see, uh, many of us believers, uh, even though we are born again, we love Jesus, you know, we carry with us what we would refer to as an old covenant mentality, meaning uh, we think our relationship with God is based on works. So we need to understand uh, that it's a relationship that is based on this blood covenant that we have with Almighty God. And I want to quickly enumerate a few things and uh, talk a little bit about and how to live uh, as people of the new covenant. You see, the, the old covenant, like I mentioned earlier, it was based on law. The new was based on grace. Uh, the old covenant brought guilt. The new covenant brings righteousness. So you and I must be people who are aware of our righteousness of God. You know, if you are living under guilt, constant guilt, you're always saying, God, I'm unworthy. God, I'm unfit. But you're, you're living under old covenant mentality. It was just guilt. The new covenant mentality is righteousness. It says, God, I accept that I am righteous in your eyes. I'm accepted. I don't have to earn anything. I have to accept the fact that I'm accepted. I've been made righteous in the eyes of God. That's living under new covenant. You know, the old covenant, uh, was uh, was based on human effort. Like we said, the new covenant was, is, ba is based on faith that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we live by faith and we are empowered by the Spirit of God. We open our lives. We walk by faith and we open our lives by the work of the Spirit. That's how new covenant people have to live. Um, the old covenant brings bondage. The new covenant brings liberty. So the old covenant, took, you know, just restricted people. You can't do this. You can't do that. We are in a new covenant where God says, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are not tied down to all, you know, do's and don'ts. We have freedom. Of course, we live uh, righteously. We live honorably. We live in holiness before God. We live in purity before God. But there is that sense of liberty in the new covenant. Uh, the old covenant, uh, you know, we understand the old covenant required recurring sacrifices, but the new covenant, we have a sacrifice that is once and for all, it's done, uh, and uh, we rest in that. We are not trying to, you know, uh, do our own sacrifices to earn anything before God. We rest in the finished work of Christ on the cross, and that's living like a new covenant person. You know, and I just remind you, uh, under the new covenant, God says you are his own peculiar people. So you are his own special people. Understand that even today, when God sees you, he sees you as his own special person because you are in covenant and a blood covenant with him. God looks at you that way. So you walk with that sense of knowing I'm a, spe a special person to God because I'm in blood covenant with God. I have made the choice to enter into that covenant. I've joined myself with Almighty God in this blood covenant. And so I am special because I am in covenant with God. Uh, we are kings and priests unto our God, the scriptures tell us. Uh, and we walk in the provisions and the blessings of this new covenant that we have with God. I want to encourage you, you know, there are spiritual blessings that are yours. Every promise in the Bible is for you, and it's it's backed by this blood covenant. That's why Paul writes, he says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God by us, so that we can glorify God, we can bring glory to God through the promises of God. The Bible says that God has given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature and we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. God has given to us these promises. Every promise is backed up 
by this blood covenant. So you take that. So God, this is it. It's for me. So when you and I read the Old Testament, remember that's our minimum. Every promise that God put in the Old Testament is our minimum. So God, if that was given out of the Old Covenant, I am in a covenant that is much better, it has greater promises. I want this. And this is minimum. You take God's promises for your family. You take God's promises for your children. You take God's promises for your the work of your hands. You take God's promises for every area of your life. And you say, God, this is covered by a blood covenant and I'm going to receive it. I want to walk in it. All right. Now we're going to move into this very important time of partaking of the Lord's table. And you know, if you've been following what I've been saying in this service so far for ministry for the Word of God, this Lord's, the Lord's table is very, very powerful. It is like what we said, a sign of our covenant with God. We are putting God in remembrance. We are reminding ourselves. We are reminding each other as people in the body of Christ. We are all blood covenant people. We are in this covenant with God that God made with us through his son, Jesus. And we are also proclaiming to the works of darkness. that you know, we are in covenant with God. And everything Jesus did on the cross is part of this covenant. On the cross, Jesus took our sins so that we could be forgiven. On the cross, Jesus took our sicknesses and diseases so that the Bible says by his wounds, by his stripes, we've been healed. That's part of the covenant. On the cross, the Bible says the punishment for our wholeness was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. The punishment for our wholeness. Wholeness is made available to us. Shalom is ours through the cross. It's part of the covenant. The blessings of God are upon our lives through the covenant. So the curse has been removed that the blessing of Abraham might come on us who are gen the Gentiles through Christ. It's part of the covenant. Healing is part of the covenant. Prosperity over your life is part of the covenant. Our provision for your needs is part of the covenant. Every blessing the Bible says is part of the covenant. God has made it available for you. And as we prepare to partake of this, we are proclaiming the blood covenant that we have with God and saying, God, because of this covenant, I receive into my life whatever I need. You know, some of you may be watching, need healing in your bodies. Some may be needing intervention, divine intervention in other areas of your life. All kinds of challenges, all kinds of problems. But you know, today as we partake of this covenant, I want you by faith saying, God, you made a covenant with me. And you said you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are Jehovah Shalom. That's who you are. And I receive it in my life. You know, that simple prayer. As you and I do this, will cause us to receive God's work in our lives because he is a faithful God. He is faithful to his covenant. He is a God of loving kindness and tender mercy. He will do that. Now, before we go into the Lord's table, if there is somebody watching me or listening and you've never received Jesus Christ into your life, I want to give you an invitation to do that. You know, when you say yes to Jesus, you are entering into this wonderful relation, covenant relationship with God. It is something money can't buy. It is, you don't get it by signing your name on a church register. You don't get it by, you know, attending a church. It is your personal decision to believe in Jesus Christ, the living God. And when you do that, you come into this wonderful relationship with God. And of course, you grow to know him more and more. That's a journey that we all have to make. And we make that over time. But you start that journey by making this decision, by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to help you do that. I'm going to lead us in a very simple prayer. Uh, there's nothing magical about that prayer. It's just to help you, show you how to pray. But it is your faith, it is your decision to believe in Jesus that counts. That's what makes the difference, that you believe in Jesus Christ. And he comes in and makes you a new person. And he sets his covenant in place in your life. Let's pray together. I want to lead us first in that prayer. If there's anyone listening or watching, you've never received Jesus Christ in your life, and you would like to do that now, follow with me in this prayer. And after that, we're going to partake of the Lord's table together. Let's pray. Say this with me. If you've never done this before, and you would like to do this right now. 
Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe you died for me on the cross. You paid for my sins. You were buried and you rose up again. And you're alive today. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. And help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if there's anyone here, anyone who's prayed that prayer with me, we'd love to hear from you. So you could, you know, maybe type your name in the live chat or send an email uh, to us at testimony at apcw.org. We'd love to hear from you just to know that you made that decision today on the service. It'll be our joy, our delight to hear from you. We are going to move into partaking of the Lord's table. What I want you to do is, first of all, if you have the elements, the bread and grape juice or bread and water, whatever you have it for you, I want you to lay your hands on that. And if you have family members around you, you know, the head of the household can lay or whoever's sitting closest to the, to the elements, just lay their hands on the elements. And we're just going to pray. We're just going to consecrate these elements. Remember, there's nothing magical about the bread. You know, somebody may have chapati. Somebody may have white bread. Somebody may have wheat bread. Somebody may have, you know, what, what, it's not about the material, the, the, the material itself. Somebody may have wafer or biscuit, whatever. You know, it's not about that. So don't, don't get so anxious about, do I have the right kind of bread? And again, you know, if you're using water, relax. Don't worry. You know, it's not about whether you have juice or water. You know, these are tokens. The reality, the power, real power is in what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And that's what we are pointing to. So as we pray over these, we are consecrating these uh, so that these will become tokens of and uh, 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 become sign of that covenant that he made or what he did for us on the cross. That's the reality. These are just emblems or tokens of it, right? So let's pray, consecrate it, and then I'll lead us to partake. And wherever you are, we'll do it together. And at that time, I want to encourage you to expect God to be the covenant keeping God to you. I'm going to believe that God will keep his covenant with you right where you are in healing you, delivering you, coming through for you in your life situation. We will believe God together and God is faithful. He will do it in our lives. Moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, walking in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, Lord, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around. Whoa. 
Father, in Jesus' name, we consecrate these earthly elements of bread and juice or water. Lord, to be to us tokens of that covenant that we have with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And today, as we partake of these elements, like the Apostle Paul said, we proclaim our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. He took our sins. He carried our sicknesses. He became a curse. Also that we could be forgiven. We could be healed. We could be blessed. He destroyed Satan. He disarmed the principalities and powers. So we could have victory and triumph and deliverance in our lives. So we receive the full blessings of our blood covenant with you as we partake of this. The Lord Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together.
the Lord Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the remission of sins. Let's partake of the cup together, knowing what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us. Father, I pray for every person, every family that is watching. I declare the power of the finished work of Christ over their lives. I declare that Satan has been destroyed and every work of the enemy has been dismantled off of their lives. I declare the victory, the blessing, the triumph of the cross over their lives. Lord, touch every member of the family. And every member of the family, Lord, let them come together as families, experiencing your shalom, your peace. Let every work of the enemy against individuals and against families be broken. Let the peace of God invade their home, even as they are tuned in right now. Let your kingdom come into their lives. Father, we pray you'll meet needs of the people. Bring supernatural provision into their lives so they will know that you are God who keeps his covenant with his people. That you treasure your people. You are faithful to your covenant with your people. Lord, I pray for those who need healing in their bodies their minds, their emotions. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every sickness, disease, oppression in their minds and bodies leave. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, that wholeness come into their minds, into their bodies. Now, and I thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the service today and for partaking of the Lord's table. This coming Sunday, the 12th of April, we are going to conclude this series on the blood covenant. You know, I really wish we had many, many hours and we could talk about this really slowly and, you know, delve into each aspect of this, uh, uh, you know, in the word of God. But, you know, uh, in our services, we're not able to do that. We just try to touch on uh, the key points and the main highlights. Uh, coming Sunday, we will wrap this series up on the blood covenant. We want to specifically talk about the resurrected Christ, uh, the risen Lord, and how uh, all that affects and impacts the blood covenant that we have with him today. So he has instituted that covenant for us. Uh, he established it with his own blood. Uh, he's risen. He's in heaven. And today, as we as covenant people walk on the earth in blood covenant with him, how does his place as a resurrected Christ affect and impact our, uh, our blood covenant? So we're going to talk about that on Sunday. Uh, be sure to tune in for our Sunday service. Uh, please uh, share this service with your friends. You know, you've had the privilege of listening uh, to the word of God. Uh, there, there are probably others who need to hear this. So share this with them and tell them, hey, you need to watch this. You need to listen to this. I let their hearts be encouraged, let their faith be built up so that they too can learn how to walk in their blood covenant with God. And be sure to tune in on Sunday. We are going to close with a benediction. Let's receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit be with us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the service. We look forward to seeing you again Sunday. God bless.